Adequate notice of this meeting was provided and published in the Asbury Park Press on January 6, 2014. Copies of the agenda were provided to the newspapers, posted on the public bulletin boards, and on the Township website. Thank you very much. At this time, will everyone please turn off your cell phones? And roll call, please. Councilman Moore. Here. Councilman Dion. Here. Councilwoman Zapsik. Here. Councilman Mumalo. Yes. Councilwoman Pontarero. Here. Vice President Fosman. Here. President Lindecker. Yes. Here. <laughs> it's catchy that yes. <laughs> yes, I am here. Will everyone please stand for our salute to the flag and our moment of silence? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, we will accept the reports of our municipal officers. Yes, thank you. Thank you, and we need to approve the minutes of the <coughs> November 25th and December 9th, 2014 council meetings. Can I have a motion and a second? Make a motion Move. to accept. Second. Motion made by Council Vice President Fosman, seconded by Councilwoman Contrarero. Roll call, please. Councilman Moore. Yes. Councilwoman DeYoung. Yes. Councilwoman Zapsik. Approve on the uh, 25th of November, abstain on December 9th. Councilman Mamamolo. Yes. Councilman Pontero. Yes. Vice President Fosman. Yes. President Lidecker. Yes. And we do have a brief presentation for our November uh, Student of the Month. If any of the council members wish to join me on the floor, I will. Sure.
don't think that the microphone is on? It's just loud. It's just loud. Okay, so I have a bunch more certificates than the three, so we'll go through them so we can uh, commemorate all of our student of the month names. The first one is Cameron Scandrass. We do have uh, one more sort of a presentation, and I'm going to ask uh, Scott Pizaris to come up to uh, take our business administrator seat to give us the report of note sale and special emergency notes. <coughs> uh, good evening, Council, uh, Mayor, Attorney for the Township. Uh, the Township went out for uh, two note issues. One was a special emergency note. Um, and the other was in the it was a special emergency note for um, ten million one sixty six one hundred and twenty one dollars and uh, a regular band in, uh, bond anticipation note uh, that was issued for nine million six hundred and eighty two thousand uh, dollars. The township did receive great rates on these notes, um, net interest cost with the premiums that were paid. Uh, so we received very low interest uh, costs to the township and the taxpayers of Brick Township. The notes were both sold on December 18th of this year, and uh, the first one was the bond anticipation note for $9,682,000. It was uh, purchased by Oppenheimer and Company uh, at a coupon rate of 1%. Uh, premium was paid in the amount of $60,126 bringing the net interest cost of that note down uh, to $36,425 uh, for the year. And that net interest rate uh, cost is 0.3773%. So it's 37 one hundredths or just about 38 one hundredths of 1% 1 is what we're borrowing money at for short term. Uh, those are great rates. Um, and that's due to the township's credit rating and also the uh, low Fed rates. So that brings the, the bond rates down as well. A uh, special emergency note was issued in the amount of $10,057,500. That was won by Jeffries um, LLC. Uh, they bid a coupon rate on that special emergency note of 1.5%. Uh, the premium that they paid on that was $108,621 bringing the net interest cost to the township and the taxpayers 
of $41,822.44. Uh, that uh, equates to a net interest rate cost of 41.4170%. Uh, so that's just about a 42 one hundredths of a percent. And the reason that that note was a little higher than the other note is one is a general obligation for capital projects and the other is a special emergency and they're always viewed a little differently. But, uh, special emergency was due to the uh, anticipated funds we're going to be receiving from FEMA for the uh, recovery effort with Sandy. And that's all I have to report tonight. Thank you. Does any of our council members have any questions for Mr. Pizarros? Any members of the public have questions about what Mr. Pizarros just discussed? Okay. Thank you very much for coming this evening. We Thank you, and everyone have a happy new year. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Okay, at this time we're going to move on to our normal consent agenda. All matters listed under item consent agenda will be enacted by one motion in the form listed below. If discussion is desired on any item, this item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately. Any of our council members wish to remove anything? Okay, seeing none, resolution one, authorized budget appropriation transfers. We're taking $330,500 from salary and wages and moving it to other portions of salary and wages. And we're also moving $25,120 from the roads account and transferring it to interest on notes, parks, and human resources. The total of the transfer is $355,620. Number two, authorized transfer into dedicated trust funds. These are some funds that have been set up for a very long time, but only in the last two years or so have they actually been funded in case we have a snow emergency or if we have someone retire and they have accrued uh, sick leave that they are entitled to be paid out. We are moving $750,000 into the dedicated account for accumulated absence liabilities and $750,000 into the account for snow removal. This is great because if we do have a weather emergency or a snow emergency, that costs us you know, upwards of half a million dollars or something like that. We don't have to go out to borrow the money. We already have it set aside for these emergencies. Number three, authorized shared service agreement with Ocean County Prosecutor's Office for Fatal Accident Support Team, also known as FAST. This gives permission to our mayor to execute a shared service agreement between BRIC and Ocean County Prosecutor's Program. And if you read the papers, you may be aware that we, re Ocean County routinely leads the state in uh, traffic fatalities. This program is aimed at investigating traffic crashes that result in serious injuries or fatalities in Ocean County. And during times where additional manpower is needed for investigation or training, members of the FAST team will be called out to assist. They'll be paid by monies in the prosecutor's program fund, which has been designated by the Ocean County prosecutor and board of chosen freeholders. Number four, authorized receipt of proposals, community development planning, and housing rehabilitation services. We currently have our contract through Rehab Co. and um, it's an annual rate of $120,000 per year. This contract does expire on March 17th of 2015, so we need to start working on soliciting bids for that now. Number five, authorized receipt of proposals for planning services. This is in regards to uh, the post Sandy uh, planning and studies and reports. The contract will expire on February 17th, 2015. Right now, we're <coughs> working with Arcadis, TM Associates, CME Associates, Mazer Consulting, and Burgess Associates. Number six, authorized receipt of bids for Colorado Park. This is a park that has been in the news, uh, not in the too distant past. This is the park that um, some vandals had burned to the ground. Uh, this is something that's coming out of our Parks and Rec Department and I'd like our chairperson to address that. Thank you, Council President. I'm delighted to. Uh, this uh, resolution authorizes the township to, uh, actually the, the town, one of the township engineers, CME Associates, to prepare the bid specifications for the renovation and improvements to Colorado Park. Uh, the new park will uh, feature uh, two playgrounds, one for ages two to five, one for ages six to 12, basketball courts, a new gazebo, perimeter walking trail, a baseball field with a clay infield and a backstop, 
off-road parking, fencing, and um, most importantly, security cameras. We all felt that it was necessary as we invest these kind of township resources to be able to protect them to the best of our ability. So we will be putting in um, infrared cameras um, so that if there is an incident, we are able, the police department is able to go after the perpetrators and uh, recover, hopefully recover our losses. I do want to add that this is just the first of three parks that we will be renovating next year. We're also going to be renovating Lake Riviera Park and Angela Hibbard Park. So in the next coming months, we will be preparing bid specs and going out to bid on those projects as well. Thank you. Thank you. That sounds like it's going to be a really nice uh, addition to our community, and I'm sure the residents there will really appreciate that. <clears throat> Number seven, authorize award of proposal for animal control services. In 2014, the township spent upwards of about $300,000 for this service alone for what we currently offer uh, our residents. Our administration and the staff um, decided that we needed to look into other options, um, maybe get more resources for our dollar, because $300,000 is a lot of money. So one of the things they did was contact other neighboring towns that are about our size to see what kind of services they get and who they get those services from and how much that costs. So with that information, uh, we did put out a bid spec Notifications were mailed to four firms. Three firms requested packages, but only one of those firms sent their bid back in, and that is A Academy of South Jersey. So they will be our new animal control officer and animal facility. Did you want to speak to this? We're actually breaking it out in two parts. Um, the animal control officer, which is uh, A Academy, and then a shared services agreement with the county for the shelter piece. So the facility and the animal control officer are two separate services that had been uh, provided as one service, uh, which we bid out separately to get appropriate pricing. Okay, thank you. This is a one-year contract, so we'll see how it goes. Number eight, authorize award of third year contract employee vision program. In 2012, the council awarded a contract to United Healthcare Insurance Company um, to provide Brick Township an employee vision program. The uh, first two years have been su successfully completed, so we are going to award them a third year contract, and again, that's to United Healthcare Insurance Company. Number nine, authorize award of second year contract employee health benefits program. In January of 2014, the council awarded a contract to Fairview Insurance Agency Associates as the insurance broker slash consultant to assist the township in the solicitation of quotes and proposals for its employee health benefits program. The contract was awarded for um, one year with provisions for a second and third year. So far, it's been successfully completed, so we are awarding the second year contract. And that begins on January 1st, 2015. Number 10, authorized award of second year contract, employee vision and dental benefits program. Back in January 2014, we awarded a contract to Creative Financial Group of New Jersey as the insurance broker slash consultant to assist the township in solicitations of quotes and proposals for the employee vision and dental health care program. It was again for one year with provisions for a second and third year. It was successfully completed thus far, so we are awarding a second year contract to the Creative Financial Group of New Jersey. Number 11, authorize award of contract retirees prescription plan for select solutions. Again, Fairview Insurance Agency um, helped us obtain uh, renewal rates and quotes from select solutions to provide the retiree prescription plan for our retirees. And we do accept the proposal negotiated by Fairview Insurance with select solutions. And that contract commences on January 1st, 2015, and it ends on February 28th, 2015. Number 12, authorize award of contract, COBRA Services for Benefit <coughs> Analysis, Inc. Again, Fairview Insurance Agency and Associates has obtained renewal rates from Benefits Analysis, Inc. to provide COBRA rates and COBRA benefit consulting for our employees and retirees, and we are accepting the proposal that was negotiated. And this is a one-year contract starting February 1st, 2015. Number 13, authorize award of contract, Stock Loss Symmetra Financial. Fairview Insurance Agency has obtained renewal rates from Symmetra Financial 
to provide stop loss coverage for the Township of Brick employees and its retirees, and we are accepting the proposal that they have negotiated. It's a one-year contract starting January 1st, 2015. <coughs> Number 14, authorize award of contract employee health benefits for Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield. Again, Fairview Insurance Agency obtain renewal rates from um, Blue Cross Blue Shield to provide medical coverage for our employees and the retirees, and we accept their proposal to provide third-party administrative services to the township. And that begins on January 1st, 2015 for a one-year contract. Number 15, authorized donation of surplus property, a genie light tower to Brick Board of Education. This is just an item that we no longer use, <coughs> and the Brick Board of Ed thinks, you know, feels that they would be able to make use of it, so we're just transferring it over to them. Number 16, authorized donation of surplus property, canine vehicle to Manchester Police Department. If you recall, in a previous meeting, we had given them one of the dog cages, the canine cages for these cars. The car that we are donating is one 2005 Crown Victoria, which is a canine vehicle. And uh, the police department will set up the transfer for that vehicle. Number 17, authorized issuance of plenary retail consumption liquor license to Red Robin. Um, we did this a few months ago, back in February of 2014. We went out uh, for receipt of bids to see if there were any interested parties for this liquor license. Uh, we did, on April 15th, award it to Red Robin, who was the only uh, entity that was determined to be qualified for that bid. And that bid amount was for $550,000. Number 18, authorized renewal of motor vehicle selling licenses with restrictions to Nailers Auto. They put in an application to uh, sell their motor vehicles for 2015. They do have a few restrictions. They'll be limited to the display of no more than three vehicles at any time. The vehicle shall be displayed in the existing parking stalls adjacent to the mechanic shop on the east side of the site. And no vehicles can be parked or displayed in the existing fire lanes, of course, or loading areas. Number 19, <clears throat> authorized renewal of police towing licenses. Uh, these 12 companies all currently have a license and they applied for a renewal of their license for 2015. They are Andrews Auto Body, Brick Performance, Dell Towing, Frank's Towing and Transport Service, Joe's Service Center and Towing, Joe's Towing and Auto and Truck Repair, Legacy Towing, Lepore Service Center, PPTD, Route 88 Auto Body, Sandus, Sandy Service Center and Surfside Collision. <coughs> Number 20, authorized renewal of trailer park license for Princeton Beach Estates. The owners there uh, submitted an application for renewal of their license. Uh, the application's been reviewed and inspected by the township zoning officer. There's been no conditions on the property that are to be addressed, so we are going to renew the license effective January 1st, 2015 through December 31st, 2015. Number 21, authorized, for, um, authorized first amended use agreement with Brick Fitness in Civic Plaza. As you all know that this is a property that we own, so any of the <coughs> rent monies we collect uh, come directly to the township. So that's a nice benefit we have here in town. At a previous meeting, we entered, uh, on September 9th exactly, we entered into a use agreement with Brick Fitness for women, which allowed for limited use of the um, the storefront that they are renting from us for a period of 10 weeks for a fee of $1,500. They want to extend the term of that lease for an additional 10 weeks, um, and the terms are, of course, 10 weeks, use of the unit for a total of four one-hour fitness classes per week, one per day, and the total use fee in the amount of $1,200, and the obligation on part of Brick Fitness for Women to be responsible for any damage to the unit during the time. 22A, tax collector. This is just a 100% uh, disabled vets refund that's been granted for 198 Mast Road in the amount of $9,514.34. And 22B, this is a, sta um, it's a resolution that we have to pass. It's a statutory requirement for the council to approve. We do it every year. With this resolution being passed, the township can impose the maximum interest on delinquent taxes, which is 8%, on the first uh, $1,500, and 18% for any amount over $1,501. The council, like I said, we do this on an annual basis. 
423, authorized shared service agreement with Ocean County Board of Health, Animal Facilities Services. This is something our business administrator spoke about earlier in the meeting, so I'll ask her to address this again, please. Yes, this is a shared service agreement with the County of Ocean to serve as our um, animal facility, uh, with, which goes in concert with the appointment previously made for an animal control officer. Thank you. Number 24, ratifying and affirming. Flash. Bless you. Ratifying and affirming the termination of the redevelopment agreement between the Township of Brick and m, &M at Route 70 LLC. I'm going to ask our mayor to please address this. Sure, thank you. Um, back in September, we gave them a notice of termination for the Food Town property, and that notice of termination expired on December 29th of this year, which is yesterday. So I asked if the council would uh, ratify and affirm the termination of that redevelopment agreement. It was 11 years ago that we bought the per property, and it's called the Old Food Town, and 11 years is a long time, and there's still, still nothing there. Um, it was almost six years ago that we entered into a redeveloper's agreement with a company called m and and they were selected by the mayor and council back then to develop the site, and yet here we have a vacant piece of land in the middle of our town, it's a financial burden that cannot be allowed to continue. Um, I want to see it developed as soon as possible. And waiting 11 years is too long. Waiting those six years after a redeveloper was picked is way too long to wait. Uh, the Hoover Dam, I point out, was built back in the 1930s. And it only took five years to build that. And that was a $49 million project back in the 1930s. And it still only took five years. And we are six years on this food town site. So it's absolutely ridiculous. We have been paying, and when I say we, all the taxpayers of BRIC have been paying $465,192 each year since we bought the land. And to date, we have spent $3.9 million due to m and failure to move the project forward. Now that doesn't include the tax money we would have brought in. That would have been on top of that, depending on what was built there. So if you take that 465, we wouldn't be paying that because we wouldn't own the property anymore. You put on top of that a round number of 100,000 of, of, of taxes that would have came into the town, we're talking over a half million dollars a year that we've been missing because they haven't done a thing on this uh, site. So six years long enough to wait. There was at least five other developers that apparently presented plans to the former mayor and council. They chose this particular one. If any one of these other five were chosen, I'm sure that we would have had a completed project by now but it's been dragging on and on and on, and that's why I terminated the contract, um, and I'm asking the council to ratify and affirm that termination. And just to let you know, the redeveloper, instead of just walking away upon termination, has now decided to sue the town, saying, oh, we, I really do want to build something there. And he filed a lawsuit that we are going to vigorously defend, um, but we're moving forward with the termination as is. So his lawsuit is that he really wants to build something there. Well, where were you for the last six years? Uh, it's absolutely ridiculous and putting an end to it with the termination of the contract. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that is the end of our consent agenda. Can I have a motion and second, please? Make a motion. Second. Motion made by Councilman Mumla, second by Councilwoman DeYoung. And now I'm going to open to the council for any questions or comments about the different resolution. Okay, seeing none, I'm going to open to the public. Yes, Ms. Call. Dan Carly, Jean D. Briar Boulevard. I'm going to say now, before I make the reason I came up, you have been a fantastic chair, Mr. President. Thank you. And you may be a tiny person, but you've got a heck of a big shoes for them to fill. But about the m and I just want to say, hooray, hallelujah. And if you want, I will give a friend of the court deposition or briefing, whatever you want, because that man has some heck of a nerve to sue. I'll make my other comments later. Thank you. Any members of the public wish to be heard on the consent agenda this evening? Okay, seeing none, I will close public and roll call, please. Councilman Moore. Yes. Councilwoman DeYoung. Yes. Councilwoman Zapsik. Yes. Councilman Mumla. Yes. Councilwoman Pontero. 
No as to number seven, yes to the rest. Vice President Fosman. Yes. President Lidecker. Yes, thank you. I apologize, I need to amend in addition to number seven, I'm also voting no to number 23. Yes to the rest. Moving on to number 25, Bill Resolution, Computer 2014. Be resolved by the Township Council of the Township of Brick that the following bills be paid and that the mayor and the clerk be and are hereby authorized to draw orders on the treasurer for the amounts of the same. Computer Bill Resolution in the amount of $4,256,664.93. Thank you. Motion and second? Motion. Second. second. Uh, motion made by Councilwoman Pontrero, seconded by Councilwoman Zapsek. And I'm going to open to council for questions and comments. Ms. Dion. Um, quick question to the business administrator. I see um, we have on here um, an attorney bill for our property maintenance board. Um, I know Mr. Scott has been up here um, expressing a little bit of frustration with the board itself. Can you give us an update on the board? I'd be happy to, thank you. Uh, actually, I'm happy to because it's a great report. We uh, have an uh, attorney in place and um, has been working diligently in the past several months to um, get the board back on track. Um, they had two meetings in this month of December alone. Uh, one of those meetings went almost four hours. The other one was over two hours. So the board is really back in action, very diligent, um, very aggressive with its agenda, and making sure we're bringing these folks in to talk about their properties and the status of those. So it has been a very, very busy few months for the property maintenance board, I'm, I'm happy to report. Any other council members have questions? Okay, seeing none, I'll open to public for uh, bill resolution computer 2014. Seeing none, I will close public and ask for roll call, please. Councilman Moore. Yes. Councilwoman DeYoung. Yes. Councilwoman Zatzik. Yes. Councilman Mamalo. Yes. Councilwoman Pontero. Yes. Vice President Bosman. <coughs> Excuse me. Abstain on the MUA and yes to the rest. President Lidecker. Yes. Uh, moving on to number five, ordinances on second reading. When ordinances come before us on second reading to vote, the public is allowed to give public comment. So after we have um, the few steps that we have to put in place first, we will open for public <coughs> comment. Number one, amend chapter 245, land use temporary sleeping quarters. An ordinance of the Township of Brick, County of Ocean State of New Jersey, amending section 245-296M1D of the Code of the Township of Brick. Thank you. This is something that came out of land use right after Superstorm Sandy hit. We needed to put an ordinance in place for the charitable and group uh, church organizations that wanted to house volunteers that wanted to come to our township to help us put the pieces of our community back together. And thankfully, we've had um, a great successful turnout for that. One of the provisions that we did put in is that it's called the sunset provision. When you have it in there, it means that you have to come back to the ordinance every so often. In this case, we did it every year to see if there were any updates or changes that we could make to uh, make the ordinance better. Thankfully, everything has go been going superbly, so we don't have to make changes. The only thing we're doing now is revisiting the date and setting another future sunset date. So this sunset date will expire on December 31st, 2015. So you'll see this at next December's in 2015's meeting. Uh, motion and second, please. Make a motion. Second. Uh, motion made by Council Vice President Fosman, seconded by Councilwoman Pontorero. And I will ask if Council has any questions, comments. Seeing none, I'll open to public. Seeing nothing from public, I'll ask for roll call, please. Councilman Moore. Yes. Councilman DeYoung. Yes. Councilman Zapsek. Yes. Councilman Mamalo. Yes. Councilman Pontero. Yes. Vice President Bosman. Yes. President Lidecker. Yes. Thank you. Number two, amend chapter 288, prohibit left-hand turns, Adams Drive and Washington Drive. An ordinance of the Township of Brett County of Ocean State, New Jersey, <coughs> amending section 288-45 of the Code of the Township of Brett, prohibiting left-hand turns. Thank you. We were approached by the state to pass this ordinance. There is a service station on Route 88 that would like to reopen, and their plans are going through uh, the different boards to get approval to reopen. 
And what the ordinance reads is persons attempting to make left-hand turns onto Route 88 from the parking lot of a service station at the intersection of Route 88 between Adams Drive and Washington Drive could present a traffic concern and we need to establish a no left-hand turn zone at that location. What we are going to do is put a no left-hand turn coming out of the direct driveway that turns onto Route 88 so they can't turn left directly onto Route 88 because there's a traffic light right there. And it's so close in proximity that you could create you know, a potential T-bone accident issue. So we're asking them to come, we're asking future motorists to come out of the side entrance, come up to the light to make a left-hand turn onto Route 88. Uh, any uh, motion and second, please? Make a motion. Second. Second. All right, there's a lot of seconds on that one. Uh, motion made by Council Vice President Bosman, seconded by Councilman Mumalo. And I'm not sure you all chimed in at the same time. <laughs> any questions from the council? No. Okay, any questions Wait, from, yes. You want to clarify that? Yeah. The, the, the um, prohibit left turn is, is two different streets. It's the old Exxon that's on Route 88. There was some confusion that it was Texaco on the corner of Coolidge right. and 88, but it's actually down further between Washington and uh, yeah. Adams. Yeah. That's yeah. the right. that's the area because yeah, I know there's two stations within, you know, very close. But that's <laughs> the station that this is pertaining to, which which is the old Exxon station, right? right. right. Which I just want to let everybody out there know. I know there's a person uh, who's impacted greatly by the Exxon site. Um, they're not allowed to open that Exxon station until they remediate right. whatever problems the old Exxon station <clears throat> had. So I know there was one particular neighbor that was very concerned with that area, <laughs> and I want to him uh, to be assured that the state will not issue them a license to DEP until they clean up whatever problems the old Exxon had. Right. Thanks. Thank you. And Council President, yeah. I just wanted to clarify because I did get a, um, I live in this general neighborhood and got a, a, a call from um, a business owner. It is not prohibiting left turns from Adams Drive or Washington Drive, only the left turn from the gas station parking lot right. onto Route 88. <clears throat> thank you. All right, thank you. Any questions from the public on this ordinance? No left hand turns out of the gas station. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. <laughs> All right, seeing none, uh, roll call please. Councilman Moore. Yes. Councilman DeYoung. Yes. Councilman Zapsek. Yes. Councilman Mumlo. Yes. Councilman Pontarero. Yes. Vice President Fosman. Yes. President Lidecker. Yes, please. Thank you. And moving on to number six, my favorite part of the meeting, public comments. Please note that each person addressing the council during any section of the meeting during which public comment is permitted shall limit his or her remarks to five minutes pursuant to Brook Township Administrative Code, section 2-33B. Who would like to lead us off? Yes. <coughs> Foster, one way to the drive. Uh, two points, quick ones. First, I want to congratulate and thank Mayor Ducey for the uh, red light camera being uh, re being removed to Burke Township because the state program just ended nationwide. Can you hear okay? Uh, sorry. No? Yeah. Can you hear me okay now? We thought it was an on earlier, but it was double commercial. checked. Yeah, I hear yeah. like a little bit of a echo, so you can't hear. But I, I just want to, I'll speak up a little bit louder then. That's okay. okay. Yeah. You know, I just want to say uh, thank you to Mayor Ducey for the red light camera, ending the red light camera program in Brick. It just ended statewide in New Jersey. It was a trial program anyway, but it just ended in New Jersey statewide a few weeks ago. So it, it, uh, it, uh, there was a state senator, I forgot his name, but he did come out, uh, he was one of the uh, people that was opposed to the red light camera program. And there have been statistics then that re studies released that showed that the red light cameras did cause an increase and certain types of uh, car accidents. So I, I want to thank Mayor Ducey for that. I, I've done this in the past, but uh, the state program has just ended, and I, I it was, it's uh, appreciated because it shows that you did have uh, the courage to go out there in advance and take it out on your own, even though it was very popular from a standpoint of uh, generating revenue for the township. So I thank you for that. Thanks. Uh, uh, question, uh, well, actually, it's not quite, uh, yeah, what well, question is about the, uh, I, met, I think it was Councilwoman uh, Hanto Yero at the Brick tra Trap Neuter Release Program? Yes. Yeah, I've been in a couple of uh, pet stores, and I'm not gonna name any names. I don't wanna get anybody in trouble, but uh, there's been a cutback. At, at the last one I attended, 
was th they're talking about how there's a cutback in funds funding to the uh, TNR program and animal programs in general. So I wanted to know uh, if uh, if Rick, uh, what is the status of Brick Township's involvement with it? I, I think that you were there as a liaison between the township and TNR. You're correct. Uh, is there? I know money is tight in the budget and everything, but uh, is there any? Uh, what is the status of the township support of Brick TNR or any other uh, programs in town? I apologize, right. by the way, because I did notice it was on the agenda something about the uh, the animal shelter program, and I know that was talked about the pet stores. I went in, but I got caught up late. I got late. Got here late. Blah, blah, blah. I just had. I'm not going to go into details, but uh, so I apologize that this addressed earlier. I understand your question, Sam. Basically, the TNR committee, which is the trap, neuter, release committee that we have in our town, which traps, neuters, and releases feral cats in order to humanely cut down on the feral cat population. Basically, the TNR committee has started doing fundraisers. We had one fundraiser at the Scone Shop in Brick, which is a lovely establishment. And we're going to be doing more and more fundraisers in order to create a self-sustaining uh, program for our town. At a point in time when we still have over 1,000 people that are homeless, it is nearly impossible to squeeze from this budget without raising taxes monies to help the animals. So what the TNR committee is doing, and I absolutely applaud and commend them, is taking matters into their own hands, raising the funds themselves so that it is not going to cost our town money in order to have this wonderful program. I understand, yeah, because I, I did meet there at the last one. The only yes. one I actually attended. But yes. uh, there was a case of Petro Security, there's a raccoon found with rabies two streets <laughs> away from me, and they were wanting people to bring their cats indoors in. So there's a health risk there if a you know, feral cat or any animal is bitten by a raccoon, then it can, uh, you know. Which is that. why it's important to have a trap, neuter, release program, because those animals, when they are trapped, they're tested for rabies. They're, tra they're also tested for other diseases before they are released back out into the public, making yep. this even more important that we have this type of program so that if there is a concern about rabies or other diseases, the animals that are kept in what's called colonies and are fed by people, trapped, neutered, and released, are not going to be the animals that are carriers of diseases. And it also makes us well aware in advance if it does spread to a colony. So your point is well taken. Yeah, I, yeah, I understand that, yeah. And uh, that's just basically it, because like I said, I was very scared when I heard about the raccoons, rabies. I understand. Two streets away from me. And for some reason, there's a lot of cats in my neighborhood. Like every time I try to come home from work, it's like I see dozens of them all over the place. And I know that they're not all. Uh, Feral. All, yeah, because I went to vote at the uh, housing complex over Chambers Bridge, my new voting place, people told me that uh, there are a lot of uh, feral cats that's, uh, in the area, and they were asking, because I mentioned that I was from the TNR program. Sure. Uh, do you know what the next, if, if, there, if there's any way that the township could do anything like uh, have a program uh, like we have with the, uh, Mayor Jersey had the uh, the cards in town, the uh, the uh, business cards, I forgot what they're called now, I saw them on the doors, I was coming buy in. Uh, buy and brick. Buy and brick. The what? The buy, buy and brick. brick. Yeah, the buy and brick program. Is there any way that people can, like when I go to you know any pet store, uh, I always donate to them. I went to Tom's River one where they neuter animals and I you know, donate money there too. And same as when I go to the Freehold Raceway Mall, I go there and I donate money. So anyone anyway, can have a program that would, uh, if someone donates money at a certain store for pets, then uh, it will be matched by the, uh, by the uh, business. I and, have uh, personally visited all non-trans, uh, all non-franchised uh, pet stores in Brick to ask them to become a part of the buy and brick program so that that is possible. Um, at this point, none have signed up yet, but all have asked for the paperwork. So they're in the process of reviewing. Remember, we have a relatively new program. It took Marlboro three years to get their program up and going. So again, your point is well taken, and, uh, and I am very hopeful that we can get one or more of the mom and pop pet stores to become a part of our program. Yeah, okay, all right, thank you. Thank you. Any other? Yes, Ms. Beckler. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Michelle at uh, 808 Jane Court in uh, Evergreen Woods. Good evening. Um, I've been doing, of course, still doing 
some research on the same issues at Evergreen Woods. And uh, the interpretive guard keeps saying that we are not a type one project, which is would be uh, topo um, the topography hasn't been altered vertically or horizontally, and or a barrier has been uh, gotten rid of, bringing the nails closer to whoever. And uh, they're totally ignoring what's happened, that trees are leveled for miles, and they put six foot holes everywhere. And I would say just by opening your eyeballs that this is a major topography change. And the other thing was that um, they keep ignoring and keep bringing up is that the um, old highway authority was given over to the turnpike authority, but they inherited all their old projects. So they're just putting the shoulder back in of the project they already inherited from the old highway authority and they already took part of that shoulder out so they're just putting it back now so the road already moved closer to us at that point so i don't know if legal anything can can be done about that but that already happened so they're just ignoring they're just putting well this is a new project it's the same project <coughs> they're just fixing it um the other thing was um i tried to get the Comptroller's office to investigate the basins because there's something not right about all that. And um, so what he did was he referred me over to the um, DEP who I asked them to investigate. And so the, the um, Charlie Welch who signs the wetland permits, his boss called me and he kept quoting the same thing. So we actually looked up what all these things they were that they were citing. And one of them was, you know, we actually read it, and the authority that they say they have from these, uh, from this, these rules. And one law cites the DEP commissioner must approve a dam or reservoir larger than a mile, but doesn't have to approve anything smaller. So it doesn't even have anything over the basin. And the other one was that um, refers to the authority over the sewage treatment plant where you might have a, need a basin. If flood water rises, you might need a place to put raw sewage to be pumped so it doesn't go directly into the river. And no other authority exists that they say that they have. So we're actually looking into this. <coughs> so we'll keep you posted on that when we have something definitive. Maybe we can go shoot somebody with this and, and see what happens. Um, and then I wanted to ask about if we got anything from the OPA request for the uh, 2004 stormwater regulation. I can let you know we um, there's a new commissioner for, uh, for the DOT named Jamie Fox. So uh, Ms. Bergen and myself went out to Trenton to meet with him on, on this issue, okay. on the issue of the sound barrier. Okay. And um, Mr. Fox is not a fan of sound barriers. Was his, ex his his quote was, I do not like sound barriers. I do not like so sound walls. And I said, you know, I, I was arguing your, your guys' case, of course, you know, how you really need them. The, the parkways moved closer, the trees are down. Um, the fact that uh, it's noisy, the pollution, the trees are down in the middle, that, you know, then you can hear both northbound and southbound. And uh, he still wasn't budging. He said he's not a fan of sound walls. He doesn't like sound walls. He doesn't understand why anybody would ever want a sound wall. So I was hoping with the new commissioner there that we'd maybe uh, have a you know, an a open ear to it. He's also on the Turnpike Authority as well. So you may have appeared before him. Um, I actually, you know, I didn't know that. I didn't know he was one of the commissioners on the Turnpike Authority. I knew he was the new commissioner for DOT. So I figured we'd approach him fresh year, but he is opposed to them as well. So we tried that route. I figured it was worth a shot. Well, that's good. I mean, I, I thought pretty much the same thing. I also, also spoke to someone in the DOT and they said that their rules for sound barrier um, qualifications are even stricter than the turnpike authority. That's what the guy told me. So that's why you have the same, I guess, issue. But um, so we'll let you know on the, uh, you know, what's going on with the DEP because I thought if we could actually show that the DEP spent millions of dollars and they didn't have the authority to do that, what would that be worth to the turnpike authority? Would they want to save face and do something nice for us? That was the idea. <laughs> There's a fence on that, along the parkway in that area. There's a fence, correct? Oh, you mean the There's a fence. fence. Yeah. Who owns that fence? 
Turnpike Authority or the association? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah Chris. I've seen in the past that if the association owns that or that fence does get damaged or it's knocked down, I've seen in the past at other towns that the associations and they put up a white stockade fence. Instead of taking a chain link, they put up a white one and there's your fence. So but that's Mr. Saluka? <laughs> Maybe a resolution for next year is we get a microphone that's as loud as yours. <laughs> I couldn't we'll hear work on that. that's going on. Anyway, my letter. Uh, John Saluka, 950 Sylvia Court, Evergreen Woods, Brick Township, New Jersey. Dear Mayor Ducey, Council President Susan Lidecker, and all the councilmen and councilwomen. Uh, December 25th. Here we are in the holiday season and trying to enjoy the company of friends and family. Some days we can just let the world pass us by, relax and enjoy. The problem with this, however, is the reality of life sets in and we see before us community being harmed by big government, government agencies such as the New Jersey Turnpike Authority. No matter what statistics and studies show us, it seems like the big money flows to those who have influence and this payback happens at the expense of the citizens. Sometimes it seems that bringing the attention to the yields of society is a waste of time because some people feel it may be imposing on their precious time or they put their heads just in the sand. Has anyone seen the destruction and environment done by the NJTA uh, and because of that destruction created irreparable harm to the health and well-being of the citizens of Brick Township? Has anyone gone to Bernard Cook Park and viewed the pickleball courts? Anyone playing there will be inhaling auto and truck toxins from the new roadway being built within 100 feet of that court. Has anyone been in the Evergreen Woods and walk to the North Loop and wait at the bus stop with parents and the kids of, while thousands of autos and diesel trucks travel 100 feet away, spewing fumes into the lungs of the hundreds of brick citizens. Has anyone traveled to Burrsville Road as they create a new exit? To do so, they have torn down hundreds of trees they use to buffer the exhaust fumes from the Greenbrier development. Has anyone been on Burn Tavern Road near the parkway exit and looked at the landscape demolition and in so doing watched the people in their houses now at, that their buffer has been de decimated? Has anyone visited Cherry Wood townhouses which once stood proudly on Lanesmo Road but are now pinched by, well will be pinched by a wall as it goes through what used to be a backyard? Uh, has anyone looked at the studies that these toxins from the vehicular traffic they're killing our residents. Well, just recently, another study has come out and it discusses the auto and truck emission problem on a new group of yet to be citizens. A study just released by Harvard and their senior author, Mark Weisbach, who is an associate professor of environmental occupational epidemiology. Wow. Uh, all at, this, at the Harvard School of Public Health. The research released recently fortifies previous studies scientific studies, finding that link air pollution to autism. It offers fresh insight by showing women in their third trimester seem most vulnerable as they breathe in elevated levels of tiny airborne particles emitted by power plants and automobiles. It said, the quote was, we found an association that was specific to pregnancy and especially to the third trimester, which might shed a light on processes that are happening that can lead to autism said Mike Weisbaugh. Tying those many toxins to the final trimester may offer a compelling clue because the normal, normal uh, growth occurs that during this three month period, a time that development, brain development is most important. A group of more than 116,000 female US nurses 
with tracks since the 1980s. With this all in mind, can we as a community stand idly by while our people are getting killed and yet to be born citizens are being irreparably harmed? Our town pays legal fees for many things and maybe, just maybe, it's time not only to sympathize with our residents but stop, step up and take legal action. I know I spoke of a wall and trees and brush that needed to be placed in the Evergreen Woods area and that needs to be done soon. But as more and more studies are released, we need to protect all of our citizens from young to old of this uncaring big government agency. Thanks for your time again. Thank you. Ms. Call. <coughs> Council President, just the Wawa portion of the, the road behind Wawa, that's the county portion of the project, just trying to separate where the complaint should go. There's, I know some residents right there by Bernie Cook Park that, um, that are calling the county engineer um, after speaking with me today. Thank you. Man Hall, 18 Greenbrier Boulevard. I have three things I just want to touch on. You talked about Ocean County and vehicle accidents or um, fatalities. Well, you've heard liar's figure. You may not that liar's figuring it, but it's what's figured into it. The reason we have such big numbers is they figure in accidents on the Garden State Parkway. Ocean County has the greatest number of miles of Ocean uh, of Garden State Parkway. That's why we have so much of a big number. And uh, my next one is Jamie Fox. That man is not in his job. He, the people, are not paying him to impose his opinion, his will. He should be paying attention to what we need and want and doing it based upon that. In the past couple of days, I had occasion to ride along <coughs> Route 3 in Rutherford where the Ridge Road exit is. It was a path that I used to travel constantly. My sister lives there. And unfortunately, from Brooklyn, I had to go there for a wake and funeral. And I noticed that there is a wall on either side. I don't remember exactly where it is, starts, but at Ridge Road, where a lot of construction is going on, and to that direction, there is a wall. Like I had many years ago suggested, I'm sorry. These people deserve a wall like that, and I don't think that Mr. Fox has the right to just adamantly say no, and that there had to be, there should be really strong facts. The third item that I want to touch on is I want to employ you, strongly employ you, beg you to please revert to what was in place for many years of having public comments after the administration and the council made there. But by doing so, reverting to it, you give us a more full voice in being able to speak on what's happening in town. And I will bring call to your attention. It was imposed or changed by then President Brian DeLuca under Mayor Stephen Scott Pelley's mayorship, and I spoke many, many times. I implored Mr. DeLuca to please revert back, and he didn't. And it is denying us a full opportunity to be involved in what happens. It's we the people. And again, Mr. Fox, we're paying your salary. Please don't do what you think is best. You better have darn good, and I mean that word to end in an amen. And my last item isn't really a matter. I just want to tell you that I wish everybody here, everybody at home, the very, very best in the new year in every possible sense. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Call. Any other? Yes, Ms. Briggs.
Yes, Mr. Gross. Richard Gross, 29 Greenboro Boulevard. No complaints, no discussions. The only thing I want to say is I think this board and this mayor and council have done a superb job this past year. And I hope in the future it continues to be as great as it's been. But in the meantime, I want to wish you all a healthy, especially healthy and happy new year and be good. You are. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Gross. <laughs> Any other members of the public wish to speak this evening? Okay, seeing none, I'm going to close public comment and move on to administration and council comments, and we'll start with our business administrator. No further comments, but thank you. Thank you, and thank you for uh, all the information you gave us this evening. Happy New Year to everybody. Have a safe um, holiday weekend. I know it's a long weekend. Have a safe one. And we'll see you on January 6th. 6th. That's it? 7th? 6th. 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 January 6th. <laughs> uh, I'm happy to follow up the shortest speech I've ever heard the mayor say and just say <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year to everyone. You threw us off a little bit. I'm in shock. <laughs> I was expecting five minutes. <laughs> Ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year. Thank you. Councilman Moore. Um, to our students uh, of the month, congratulations. Please keep up the good work. And other than that, um, please, everybody, Happy New Year. Be safe. Uh, if you're traveling, please be careful. And of course, don't drink and drive. And uh, administration and council, Happy New Year. Thank, Thank you. you. That's it. Um, I just want to say it's been a really, really fun uh, first year up here. Um, and. Um, I think we've been very productive and been able to do a lot of good things for the town, but we cannot uh, continue making brick better without all of your help. Um, so we do have our citizens uh, committees that we're trying to fill. Uh, please send any resume or letters of interest to the mayor. Um, we have budget, redevelopment, senior action, disabled, community, neighborhood watch, and veterans com uh, committees that we are uh, filling. So. Um, I'd like to second uh, Nan's sentiments um, about Councilwoman Lidecker. I think she's done an outstanding job as council president, and I thank her for, um, I call her the freakishly amazing council president, because she's so good at explaining everything and uh, making us all feel at ease. Um, and with that, I want to wish everybody a happy, healthy new year, and please stay safe. Thank you, Council President. I just have two quick things, uh, and I'll probably mention this again at the next meeting, but on January 15th at the Pine Belt Arena from 6 to 8 p.m., the Ocean County Prosecutor's Office is um, offering a, a free program called Playing It Clean. It's a sports forum for student athletes and their parents, um, and it features uh, special guest speakers, um, Keith Elias uh, from the New York Giants, Todd Frazier from the Cincinnati Reds, Frank Frankie Edgar, who's an MMA fighter, Aaron Cowley, who's a former U.S. Olympic basketball player, Ray Lucas, former New York Jets, and Tony Meal, former uh, Major League Soccer player. Um, again, that's a free program, January 15th at the Pine Belt Arena, and it, that's open to all, 6 p.m. And also, the uh, Mental Health Association of New Jersey has launched a um, program called New Jersey Connect for Recovery. It's the only call line in the state that's dedicated specifically to individuals and families that are coping with heroin or prescription painkiller addiction. Um, it, there's a toll-free number. I'm going to actually, I'll, I'll give all of this information to Ed for our website and um, Facebook page. But the toll-free number is 855-652-3737. Um, they also have a website, njconnectforrecovery.org. Everything is confidential. People who call in on, on behalf of themselves are referred to as certified alcohol and drug counselor. Those who call in on behalf of a family member or friend are connected to a peer specialist who understands the unique and complex effects of addition, addiction on personal relationships. Um, again, I also I have some flyers and um, some other information, and I will make sure that all of that gets to our public information officer for dissemination. And um, again, um, thank you all for coming out this evening. Get home safely. Um, have a safe 
uh, New Year's Eve and, and uh, Happy New Year's Day and uh, wishing everyone health, happiness, and peace in the new year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. First, I'd like to congratulate all the students of the month. Great job. Look forward to next month seeing who's on the agenda. Uh, thanks to the administration, other council members for my first year as a councilman. It's been very rewarding, and I thank you for that. Thank you to our council president and vice president. Great job, uh, and happy and healthy uh, New Year to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. I'll be happy to use up everyone else's time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I first wanted to recognize the students that came in for Student of the Month. I, I was glad, I was very happy to have a chance to speak to them before they came up. I always like to know um, how they're doing, what their ambitions are in life, and to tell them that this is possible for you too. We need you in the upcoming generations. Mm -hmm to stand here and be a part of your government and how important it is. So, and I wanna thank Madam Lidecker for starting that program, which I think just does so much for the self-esteem of those children and seeing proud parents take pictures always just brings a tear to my eye. I also wanted to thank Mayor Ducey and also Ms. Bergen for making the effort to go speak to Mr. Jamie Fox about an, an issue that's important to a group of our, our citizens. We do care about our citizens in Brick and want to fix whatever we're able to fix. And Mayor Ducey and this administration has really gone above and beyond what can be done. Is there more to be done? Of course there's more to be done. But they've taken the steps that different governments may not have taken. But to go and travel to meet this individual and, and beg basically for the health welfare and safety of our citizens means a lot and I want to thank our mayor and our, our administrator for, for doing that. Um, I also wanted to recognize that the Battle of the Bulge occurred in December 16th of 1944. This was the 70th anniversary. <clears throat> Is that right? Is that 70th? Did I do it right? Okay. And we have in our community, the oldest living member in Brick of the Battle of the Bulge who received a Purple Heart. Um, I had the occasion to meet with him and speak with him. He didn't feel right accepting any type of award or proclamation for his service. Um, he said, I'm just one soldier and I just don't feel I should be recognized. But I wanted to say that so our community knows we do have this, this wonderful member from one of the bloodiest and hardest battles that was ever fought. So um, I wanted to make everyone aware of that, that one of our citizens right here, and he continues to do work for the veterans. Um, as it gets colder, and we're expected to get a very cold, cold blast, please remember your senior citizen friends and neighbors. Please remember to go and check on them. Um, we may not know if they have a heating problem. We may not know if they're not able to go to the grocery store. We have a lot of programs in Brick. You can contact Deb Welty, 262-1000, ask for Deb Welty. We have a lot of programs where we will shop for our seniors. We will provide services for our seniors, but with the bitter cold, which senior citizens can suffer from pneumonia and other um, illnesses much quicker than, than healthy individuals can. It's important to all watch out for each other. Um, I also just wanted to bring up that um, I do appreciate all the work that the Jersey Shore uh, Animal Shelter has done for our community. Um, they are a, um, a fabulous shelter. And I would encourage anyone who's seeking to adopt an animal to please utilize the services of the Jersey Shore Animal Center, whether we're using them um, for our purposes or not. There are wonderful crew there. There are wonderful people there. They have a great thrift store. So even though we won't be using their services, please don't forget that you can obtain your best friend in life um, by just visiting the shelter and taking in these animals, especially in the winter. They're also in need of donations of blankets um, and um, things to make the animals comfortable. They do accept used and old blankets. I didn't know that until recently when I called 
So anything that you can donate to the shelter is very much appreciated. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to say again is please, your prayers for my niece, Domenica, are so appreciated by my family. She was not expected to live as long as she has so far. She is still alive and she has, she's up to 6.1 pounds, which is a miracle in itself. I thank every one of you who have sent your prayers to this blessed baby and she is defying the odds at this point. So thank all of you. Have a safe, blessed, and happy new year. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Council President. Uh, 2014 has been a great year to serve as a councilman in the Township of Brick. It has been my pleasure working with Mayor Ducey, my fellow council members, the administration, professionals, and the residents of the town in making Brick a better place to live. I would like to thank each and every one of you. From the amnesty program in the building department to helping our residents rebuild their homes safely to the resident volunteers who helped build a playground at Windward Beach, to our chief of police and officers who maintain a safe community, and to all others who help in countless ways, I am so proud how this community has pulled together to accomplish many goals. Our DPW employees work extra hard every day in keeping our community clean by timely garbage and recycling pickups. Their department has many responsibilities from snow plowing to filling potholes to repairing and maintaining police cars to being available on a 24-hour emergency basis. And that's just some of the duties they share and I thank them all. The shared services our community realizes come from agreement set in place by Mayor Ducey and this council with the BTMUA. For example, electrician, reverse 911, uh, IT department, snow plowing, sign shop. These are very a shared service that saved money for everyone. Also, a 0% rate increase for two years is a savings to all. Looking forward, um, looking forward to the coming new year, I am happy, I am happy improvements to a few of our parks will be starting. More roads will be paved and our overall infrastructure is looking to be moving forward in a forward direction. I am so very proud to have the opportunity to serve all the people of this great township of Brick, where my wife and I have called home for 28 years. I'd like to give a shout out to my grandchildren. Tyler, Daviana, Devin, Aiden, and Jocelyn, and one more on the way. Oh yeah, and uh, to our grand dogger, Dakota. That's my daughter's dog. Uh, please know I am here for every resident. I can contact me at any time. Here's wishing everyone a very happy, safe, healthy, and prosperous new year. Blessings to all. Thank you. I do want to echo the sentiment of our mayor and Councilwoman DeYoung. We do have a few committees that we need slots filled in for in town. It's a really great opportunity to get involved in your community, to make a real difference on something that's important to you. Um, I think a lot of people would want to have the chance to be on something like the Citizens Budget Advisory Committee, where you get to review the budget and make direct recommendations to the council and the mayor where your tax dollars should be spent. And that's just one of numerous committees that we have available. Thank you to the students for coming in and thank you to the council for entertaining my idea of having the student of the month. And I hope and I know that it will continue into the coming years because I'll make sure it's on the agenda. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just something really great for the students, again, to see their proud parents come in and uh, recognize academics besides sports and all the other wonderful achievements of our students. The sixth, which is next week, next Tuesday, is our next council meeting and is our reorganization meeting. And I hope that this room is packed with all of the familiar faces that we see every meeting and hopefully many new faces that we don't get to see so they can come out and see their government in action. Um, and that's all I have for this evening. We'll see everyone next week. Motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right.